At the time, the Watergate case reframed the relationship between politics and the press, but its long-term legacy is open to question. I just happened to stumble into a high moment of historic import in terms of the relationship between journalism and government. Um, and I made the naive assumption that it, a point was reached where because of that work that, the, that journalism did, our First Amendment, the Constitutional Amendment, was saved. We were very much in danger with the threat of a totalitarian attitude by the gang that was in D.C. at that time. They were going to turn everything into a one-party rule, and that would be that would destroy democratic principles and so forth. So something was saved that I thought was pretty important. I just assumed that it would go on, you know, that it would just maintain itself. Well, it didn't happen. For a while, it did change politics in this country. And there was a great deal of government in the sunshine, because I was there, I was covering the Congress in those post-Watergate years. That's gone away. It's simply gone away. A lot of reporters thought that it was their job to do gotcha stories. Um, that was the bad legacy. The good legacy, which I think we're now losing, is accountability in government. If you mess up whether it's criminal or just wrong or stupid, there should be some redress in our democratic system. The lesson of Watergate was that the system worked. Everybody did their job in a straightforward and relatively nonpartisan way, and we got justice. Unfortunately, the legacy of Watergate has run out, and we need to be reminded of its lessons, and that's why seeing all the president's men again is really useful. We, the people of the United States, owe a great debt of gratitude uh, to the post management uh, in, uh, in standing on, on its rights to print this material, and with, despite the threats of being put out of business. As Catherine Graham once told me, when I said early on, I thought we'd never get to the bottom of the Watergate story, she said to me, never, don't tell me Never. That should be the motto in investigative journalism, in-depth reporting, all reporting. Following in the footsteps of Woodward and Bernstein, today's journalists face a new set of challenges. Who was America's first superhero? It was Superman. What did Superman do in his spare time? He was a journalist because he was always committed to fighting abuses of power, always committed to fighting evil. We've always associated journalists with serving the public both in their day job and when they're wearing a cape. But the current media environment from 75 to 2005, the prevalence of the cable channels, the only message that really gets through to most viewers and most Americans is the media is horrible, period. When we used to talk about the power of the press, it was kind of the little guy. The scrappy image of the reporter fighting for you has been replaced by the image of some corporate titans that really are not about representing the middle class anymore. I don't think we've ever seen the sort of uh, distrust that we have for journalists nowadays. Part of that, I think, has been fueled by mistakes that journalists have made. I think part of it's been fueled by politicians who have found journalists to be convenient scapegoats. Journalists now are much more celebrities. I think people, uh, the American public, sees them a lot more as entrepreneurs rather than just truth tellers. I mean, in other words, that you know they have a financial motivation and a professional motivation uh, to try to develop and, and uh, tell sensational stories. When people blame the media, usually what they mean is they're not uh, enough on my side of the political argument. So when you hear people attacking the media, the first question to ask is, what's their agenda? That doesn't necessarily mean the media is right, um, but usually media criticism is politically motivated. The media is weakening itself through competitive battles and through the smearings and through covering each other's mistakes ad infinitum. Politicians can point at them and say, I'm not quite sure you should trust that source. It is dangerous to hold no respect for the press as a group because if it bleeds over and you say, well, I don't respect the press, I don't respect the idea of the press, that's very dangerous. We have a free press in this country for a reason. The stakes are really big because if you lose that transparency, 
If you don't know what goes on in your government, you're really no longer living in a democracy. If investigative journalists are to avoid becoming an endangered species, they will have to master new tools and adapt to the changing media environment. The investigative journalists of the future will rely more on the internet because I think that's where uh, a lot of stories now originate, some of them phony, but also good stories. They will still use old-fashioned shoe leather and they will still be a very particular kind of reporter. There are really only about a half dozen news organizations in this country that invest the time and money in investigative reporting. Uh, this is what people don't understand. The bloggers cannot replace the mainstream media because they don't invest in investigative reporting. Investigative journalism is a very expensive art form. Uh, you have to have news outlets that are determined to commit resources to it. Uh, you have to have um, editors that are going to back their reporters in terms of really digging up information and gathering information on people in positions of power. Woodward and Bernstein's most important legacy may be the example they set of American journalism at its best. I would hope that young journalists coming along today, that somewhere in their education, one of their professors handed them all the president's men, and maybe some old clippings from the newspapers, and maybe some footage from CBS, and said, look, look who we were, look what we did. We didn't bring a president down. We proved the system worked. If that happens, then Watergate will have changed journalism. When I talk to uh, younger people who are maybe having a little bit of trouble finding their way, I remind them that, you know, Carl Bernstein basically grew up in the newsroom, didn't go to college. You don't have to necessarily have gotten all these great credentials in order to be a journalist. Here we are, 33 years later, as we're talking. I think the long-term legacy is, is enormous. I get letters every day from 15-year-olds asking me intelligent questions about what was going on when and what did you think of so-and-so. It's amazing to me. Let's talk about freedom of press and a banner across the city room so that every reporter uh, is aware that we have an important role in the, uh, the survival of this re republic, of this democracy. It cannot live without that kind of attention to detail and the willingness and courage to go after the facts so that the people shall know and the people can therefore act on the truth and not upon political declarations.